Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'd like to introduce my guest today. My guest is Rick Squires. Morning, Walt. Morning, Rick. And Rick is from Chippenham, Wiltshire, the UK. Did I say that right? You did. Completely. Did I say it with the yeah, right no problem. British right accent. accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rick is um, uh, with a project called Well Boring, and I want to want to have our control room put that uh, up right now. Um, and uh, Well Boring, where there's a will, there's a well. Oh. And we're going to talk about well boring here with Rick. Uh, and but first of all, for our viewers, I want to kind of give you a background uh, and sort of place the well boring project in in a context here. Sure. So we'll we'll do that with Rick. Now, uh, Rick, you are also with the Rotary Club of Chippenham, Wiltshire. Correct. I am. Yeah, sure. You're right. And I think we have a slide here that shows where that Chippenham, Wiltshire, uh, is located. And on the map, I think I did a little research, and, and the little red dot, that's about um, 90 miles west, west of London. Is that about right, Rick? Not yet. It's close to one of the, uh, the big um, motorways or freeways yeah. to the west of London, and it's quite close to a town which some people may know of, Bath, ah, uh -huh. which is the old Roman town. Okay, yeah. yeah. And so the, 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 the blue, thick blue line there, that would be the... The, the, the freeway uh, or the, the motorway. Freeway, that, yeah, that. yeah. Okay. exactly, yeah. Now, um, the, the um, uh, Well Boring Project uh, was funded by the Rotary Foundation Global Grant, and I want to show uh, slide three there. Well, so, so far not, but this is what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for, for our viewers, um, uh, let, let's talk about what is the Rotary Foundation, and then we'll talk about what is a global grant. So t talk in general about what the Rotary Foundation is, and we want to uh, look at uh, slide number four for sure. that. I think slide number four is probably a fairly complex slide, but the, there are 1.2 million Rotarians in the world, mm -hmm. um, all over the world, and the Rotary Foundation is really the charity um, that Rotarians donate their money to, and uh, as well as many other local charities and international charities like Wellboring, for example. But Rotary Foundation um, is, uh, looks after projects in the home countries of the various clubs, but also overseas as well. One of its biggest um, activities at the moment is to eradicate polio, mm -hmm. and Rotary's been working on that for 25 years. And 25 years ago, there were probably half a million people in, in the world um, contacted polio every year. Yeah. Um, now I think, and you probably know as well as I do, um, being a Rotarian as well, the numbers this year, I think we're down to eight people in the world contacted polio. Amazing so success it's, story. So it's been yeah. a phenomenal success story. So that's one of the things they do. Mm -hmm. um, another one is they fund students to do peace and conflict resolution as well. Um, so students going to university in various parts of the world and Rotary, people who've been funded by Rotary pop up in many of the peace negotiations which are taking place throughout the world. Um, so those are kind of two areas where Rotary Foundation operates, yeah. but also um, the foundation donates to projects which Rotary clubs come up with. Right. Um, and that's normally clubs which, um, charities which are focusing on things like education, um, health, in particular maternal health right. Right. Uh, and child health. Um, clean water, which is the one um, which is where the link with well boring is, and generally um, targeting underprivileged people, um, both in the home countries but also in, in developing countries. Right. And I like to say that uh, uh, most of the viewers of, uh, of um, North Shore Journal know that I am a, a Rotarian, I yeah, belong sure. to the Beverly Rotary Club. And my club and your club and all the Rotary clubs throughout the world, the charitable work that we do and the fundraising that we do, sure. uh, we support local projects, we support national projects, and we also, part of the money that we raise goes to the Rotary Foundation. Exactly. Yeah. And that yep. $1 billion endowment that, that we saw there on that slide yep. is part of that money. So every, yep. uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, we'll, we'll look at uh, slide number five. And you started to mention the, that uh, the uh, global grant um, has certain outcomes in certain areas of focus that, that the Rotary is looking for. So sure. why don't you tell us about that, Rick? Yes, yeah, it's, it's really the global grant focuses on a number of areas. And I say clean, clean water is one, um, sanitation, um, education as well, um, which, which in fact, well boring um, seems to hit, hit that, disease prevention, um, 
community development. Oh, you see them there as well, yeah. Education and literacy and um, economic development. Mm -hmm. um, and when we we'll talk about well boring, I'm sure in a moment, but actually we hit most of those bullet points yeah. from um, what we're doing at well boring in the, in the schools in Kenya. Right. Um, so the one we're really focusing on, um, which is the catalyst for all of the others in this particular project, is water and sanitation. Right. And let's take a look at the next slide, uh, number six. Yep. Uh, and this describes some of the characteristics of, um, of, uh, um, of projects. Projects must display the following characteristics. Talk, talk a little bit about that, yeah. Rick. I think <clears throat> problems in the past of, of many charities, um, hopefully not, uh, not Rotary Foundation, but many charities, they, they establish something and then um, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So the money goes in. And then, because it's a fairly complicated um, arrangement, um, for example, where, where there are fairly complicated pumps involved in, in the water business, uh, the pumps aren't maintained properly, etc. Um, so it's got to be sustainable, and, and that means it's, it's, got to, it's got to operate for some for some time. And just picking up on those bullet points, it's got to, the community have got to support it, so it's got to meet the community needs. So so they're they're engaged and motivated to keep it going. Um, it's got to be a fairly simple technology, and well boring uses uh, hand pumps, right. uh, which are proven. Uh, I've been operating for many, many years. It's got to have a sustainable funding. Well, the, the funding in this particular case is um, on an ongoing basis, once we've installed the pumps, is, is very, very small. You just basically have to replace the, the washer every so often, <laughs> and, and that's it. Yep. Um, and um, in addition... You, you have to really, as I've said already, you have to engage the community. Right. Because they, if they buy into it, they will, um, they, they will help maintain it anyway in, right. into the future. And, we're gonna, and when we get into some of the specifics here, when yeah, we talk sure. about the wells in Kenya, we'll see how these characteristics and these points are really brought forward in, in, the, in the effects on the community. It's not sure. just a well where you get water, but, but the domino effect into the benefits yeah. and the lifestyle and the... And the uh, of the community yeah. is really so. Let's let's talk specifically now about well boring. How, how did it get started? What's the mission of well boring, Rick? Yeah, well boring. Uh, I've only been involved with well boring for about um, nine months, but well boring started back in 2011. And let's show slide number seven. I'm yeah, sorry, okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and in 2011, there was a management training uh, program for um, a fairly large company based in the Chippenham area, and part of their management training was to actually go to Kenya and, and do some work in Kenya, um, in some of the townships in Kenya. And um, two of the guys who went on that um, trip, plus the um, Nigel Lineker, who uh, lives in Chippenham, um, who was leading the, um, the lecturing on that trip, they, they discovered there was a school which had a very high absenteeism rate. And um, the big problem was they didn't have access to clean water at the school. So they, their task, they set, set themselves the objective, was basically to um, bring clean water to the school. And that was, that was quite a complex task. Um, but they, based on, on the back of that, but they succeeded in doing that. They got a lot of support to do that. So the, the light bulb moment was, well, if we can do it for one school, we can do it for lots Why of other schools. For others? Right. Um, so um, Well Boring was formed by, by these three guys. Mm -hmm. The two guys who were on the management course and Nigel Lineker, who was the, uh, who was the lecturer who was leading the program. Right. So let's, let's uh, bring up ch uh, the next slide, slide number eight, and we'll talk more specifically about the Kenyan situation. You mentioned uh, the children and their la uh, lack of water. And I, I just want to yeah. say one thing. Uh, it, it, on the slide, you see it says 10 million, 10 yeah. million Kenyans lack access to uh, water source. And I, I want to point out to our audience that uh, there are 48 million people in Kenya, so literally exactly, yeah. one out of five people yeah. does not have access to, to a clean source of water. And this uh, is water. mainly, just by definition, the way it goes, it's in the un underdeveloped areas, which are the rural areas in Kenya. Yeah. Um, so as you say, yeah, one in five, which is quite a, quite a large proportion. Yeah. Quite a large proportion. Yeah. And, and let's, let's take a look at some of the existing and new well uh, boring projects. So yeah. uh, let's look at, at slide number nine. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, it, they, they started um, in and around Nairobi because that was where, and you see some blue dots there around Nairobi. That's where the, um, the, the first projects were. But then they, they discovered a, a really large need in Western Kenya, close to the Ugandan border. 
um, in a place in a, in a province called Kisumu. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kisumu is a town, um, but it's also a province. And a lot of people there um, don't have any access to clean water at all, especially in the rural areas. Right. And Kisumu, if you look at where Nairobi is there on the map, and you draw a line up, that it's about 170 miles. Yeah, a bit, bit uh, more than that, I would suspect. Yeah, yeah. but it's 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 kind of to the uh, to the northwest. To of, the northwest west of Nairobi. And yeah. I think we have a closer look at Kisumu, which is it's it's on a a bay of Lake Victoria. Exactly. I think yeah. it's called Homa Homa Bay. Yeah. And you see Kisumu there in the upper right hand. Uh, exactly. Uh, um, so so that's the town. That's the town of Kisumu. And then the province is basically in, in an arc all the way around um, around Kasumu. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's um, it's a long way from Nairobi, and um, partially because of that, I suspect it's it's an area which is reasonably poor, so it, it doesn't have the industrialization that um, Nairobi has or the standard of of, of life that um, Nairobi does. Yeah. So let's take a look at the next slide, Rick. Here, and we'll we'll talk about. Um uh, obviously, clean water is underground. T tell us a little bit about that. How, how, what, what, what uh, well boring does your, your test wells and, and so on and so forth. Well, one, one, of the, one of the advantages, um, in particular around the Kasumu area, is that the the aquifer, so the clean water, is is only about 200 meters. Sorry, 200 feet, mm -hmm. um, about 80 meters below the ground level. So it's very easy to um, to drill through. Um, that overburden to get to the aquifer. Um, so drilling down a, well, a complete well, the drilling, so the prospecting, the drilling, um, and the, um, the equipment that, that you install, all of that costs something like $5,000, US mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so to make a, a big difference to a community, in fact, doesn't cost a huge amount of money. Um, it's because they have the advantage there that the, um, the water is reasonably close to the surface. If it's any closer to the surface, and there is other water closer to the surface, that's probably not clean enough to drink. So if you go to 200, meter, 200 feet, then that water is, um, is clean, and you can drink it um, with just putting it through filters and no other treatment. So that, that's why um, that area is particularly attractive for um, getting the most bang for your buck, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so a $5,000 a pop. Yeah. And you can change a community's life completely. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that. Yeah, sure. But I okay. want to say a little bit about about uh, you. You you are also the principal of a company, a UK company called Pi Energy. P I, I like in like in Pi, pi three in point, Pi R squared. Pi yeah. R squared. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and Pi Energy. Uh, tell us about the company. Your your company, Pi Energy. You you are a consulting. Uh, yeah. Provide consulting pi, pi Energy is a company which um, I founded. And it, it's, it's involved in the energy consultancy business because I've, I've spent many years working um, throughout the world as, as in the energy business, um, in the gas side of the business, the oil side, um, energy shipping, um, and power generation. So I've got a, a kind of a good overview of the, of the energy business. And um, I retired a little bit early and decided I wanted to, um, to lecture. So I do a lot of lecturing and I sit on the boards of um, four companies in the UK. All, all of those boards are associated with, in some way or another, with, um, with, with the energy business. Um, these days I'm tending much more towards renewable energy. So I'm involved in a company which, for example, we have our own wind farms, our own solar farms um, in the UK. Yeah. as well. And, and, and uh, uh, for someone who has been at the cutting edge of these kinds of technologies, now you're involved in projects as, as basic as digging a well and getting water. I mean, how much more basic can you get, yeah, sure. get than that? I mean, yeah. mankind has been doing that since, since the dawn of time, trying yeah. to find yeah. fresh water. So l let's take a look at, at the, uh, the next slide, number 11, uh, Rick, and we can talk about, you, you mentioned uh, the, the sustainability in terms of the fact that you, didn't have, you, don't, have to, you don't need electricity to sure. follow up. These are, these are hand pipes. T tell us a little bit uh, about that and the, the impact on the local community. So once, once you've drilled your hole, drilled the well, and you've put um, steel casing in, you just put one of these hand pumps on, on the top. Um, and you just have to pump the handle up and down, and away you go. We have one of these, ha my house in the UK um, was built in 1675, and it's an old farmhouse, and in the back kitchen of the farmhouse, there's a hand pump, just like this. Just like that. And that's, that is, must have been there for over 100 years. <laughs> and um, so these are sustainable, 
and the maintenance is, as I said before, is, is reasonable, is minimal. Yeah. Um, very easy to operate. And also, there's no running costs. Yeah, exactly. So, um, again, the once it's installed, the community's, you know, the, the cost of, of running it is, is, is minimal. Yeah. And the big advantage um, is that we install these in schools. So it has a big impact on the children that's in the schools and also the teachers in the schools. But the kids also then, at night, they take the water home. Yeah. And it benefits all of the families in the community as well. Right. And we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit more, uh, uh, slide, the next slide, slide 12. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the effect of clean water and how it proliferates uh, through okay. the whole community and, and, uh, to, and, and the quality of life of, of, of the community. I think that's, that's the most important question, actually. Um, in the schools in Kenya, the absenteeism rate is something between 20 and 25 percent. So that means a child... If we looked at each child, there's one or two days a week when that child doesn't go to school yeah. because they've got um, some medical issue. Mm -hmm. um, you install clean water in the school, and with clean water, the absenteeism rate falls to something like 2 or 3%. So mm -hmm. it makes a huge, huge difference to the absenteeism rate. In addition, it means that um, the water that previously um, had to be collected from dirty streams or whatever was normally the, um, the work of the, of the girls in the community. Right. They would have to walk four miles, ten miles to get water, which wasn't clean. It, it now means because the, the water is on, literally on tap um, in the school, it means that those girls can then go to school. Yeah. So the attendance goes up um, because the kids aren't away ill. The more children go to school because the girls are coming to school right. and... and um, and because more children are going to school, it brings more, there's more right. enthusiasm for more people to come to school. And the other thing is the, the teachers aren't ill either because yeah. the teachers get access to the clean water. And then it has the ripple effect um, that the clean water then is taken home at night and, and the, the rest of the family are much yeah. healthier. Um, so it's, it really does. And you know that this year Rotary's motto is making a difference. Right. Um, when you install a well in a community, it makes a huge difference. Um, and the children do much better at school because they they attend all the lessons. They're not sick. They're not sick, and their 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 proficiency increases as well. Their scores increase because they don't miss lessons. Right. Um, which means they can progress further. They can be better educated. So just by making a five thousand dollar donation to to this community, you can make a yeah, huge the, change. Yeah. The, the yeah. benefits just proliferate. And down the other to thing the... is, some of the schools now they're using the water not just for. Um, for um for drinking but they're using the water to grow vegetables and grow fruit and there's even one school which is built a pond and now they're they're actually breeding fish for food so the, so the, the effects it, just keep and, keep and that, that that benefits the economy as well yeah uh, you know i want to i want to get back to something you said because i want to i want our audience to really understand because we here and and you in the uk we're, we're so used to just turning the faucet on yep. and, and getting water to drink, to brush our teeth, to shave, to take a shower, or whatever. Yeah. But, but you mentioned that the water collecting duties are primarily that's assigned to young girls. Yep. And give us an idea that, that, that this, this may take a third of a, of a, of a if you, they have to walk 10 miles yeah. to get water 10 miles. Yeah. So a, a literally a third to a half of their day of these young women is consumed yep. just in bringing water back. Well, these are hours that they could be in school, that they could be be, be learning crafts that they could be productive, yep. but it's really it's really wasted time in that sense. Is Completely it not? wasted time. And if you consider that 10% of Kenya, as we said initially, doesn't have clean water, um, that's a lot of people, a lot of girls, um, a lot of women going looking for clean water. And sometimes, if it's a drought situation, they have to go even, even further. Even further, yeah. And then they can't carry that much clean water. They can only carry. Yeah. Uh, sorry, dirty water. They can't carry a huge amount. They can probably think about it. Probably three or four gallons is about all they can carry. Yeah. And that's got to last them. It probably lasts them a day or two. Then they've got to repeat it. Yeah. Again, so they are spending a huge amount of time. So that rev revolutionizes their life as well. As soon as they have water um, at the pump in the school, um, it's 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 changes changes their lives so completely as well. Something as simple as just having that water yeah. available. Yeah. And well, then you think that. Um, <coughs> You, I was cleaning my teeth this morning, as you, as you were saying, and you think, well, we use clean water to flush the toilet. We use clean water to wash the car. Yeah. We use clean water to make the grass grow. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, this would be mind, a mind-blowing concept that you'd be using water that you had to walk 10 miles for in to, Kenya to, to make grass grow. To wash your car. Uh, oh, to, oh, that, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it just doesn't compute at all. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're gonna, you, you mentioned some of the costs. Let's look at the next slide, number okay. 13, the, uh, the, the cost <clears throat> of a well. So uh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned that. And how, what, how does that break down, the $5,000, uh, Rick? How does that five thousand? Um, it's it's principally the some of that money goes to training mm -hmm. um, and um, engaging the community before and after the well has been installed. But the major cost um, is for drilling the well. Mm -hmm. um, you have to build a drilling rig in with a number of people who operate the drilling rig, and the drilling takes about a week to go down to um, go down the, the two hundred feet. And as well as the physical drilling, you then have to have steel casing. Um, to line the hole that you've drilled mm -hmm. so the water is not polluted by, by, um, by some of the water in shallower areas. Um, and then you've got to pay for the pump. So most of it is for drilling the well and um, provision of the pump and the steel casing um, and some gravel to go around the casing as well. Um, and then, um, so the rest is training, which yeah. is probably less than 10% goes on training and engagement of the, of the village. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, have, you work with an organization called GUACO, GUACO which is the uh, Groundwater Abstraction Kenya Outreach. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? <laughs> well, that's a great, that's a great organization. That's a community organization, which means that any money they make goes back into expanding their operations or back into the local community. Um, again, it's actually run by a Rotarian who, who um, is a member of one of the clubs in the Kasumu area. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been doing um, drilling for water for 15 years. So they've been working for well boring for, um, for the six years that well boring has, has been operated. But they've got a long history of, of operating in that part of, of Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the real attraction is why I like them so much is, is they are a community organization. Yeah. Um, so they're not there to make profits. They're there to put the money back into the community. Yeah, wonderful story. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah. Let, let's talk, uh, uh, let's show the next uh, slide to, uh, that talks a little bit about some of the existing wells uh, and uh, what's happened so far. So t talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the existing wells and what, what's happened with that. Well, well you, saw, you saw the map. So some of those wells um, were in the Nairobi area, but the vast majority of those first 33 wells that well boring have have drilled already um, are in the Kasumu area. So we've, n we've nowhere scratched the surface with 33 wells, I can tell you, because each, each well is in a community and Kasumu area is, is it's, the province is a big area. Yeah. Um, so there are literally hundreds of communities that uh, we can benefit. Mm -hmm. And well boring's target um, is, is to get to 100 wells. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully beyond that, even more wells. Mm -hmm. So of that 100, they've already done 33, yeah. where, which is a pretty, uh, a pretty fair number, yeah. actually. Now, your first well, uh, uh, I understand, was in 2011? In 11, yeah. Uh, and when, when do you hope, Rick, to have the 100th well um, done? It depends very much on, um, on how much money we can raise, how quickly we can raise that money. Mm -hmm. um, and when the Rotary Club... Um, the Rotary Club in Chippenham with the help of the Rotary Club of Beverly and other Rotary Clubs um, in France and Germany and, and the UK. We're looking to raise between thirty and forty thousand dollars. So that's eight, another eight wells. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope to get there in, in probably two to three years. Mm -hmm. Um, but it does depend on how much money we can raise. Right. And I just want to follow on to what you said. You made a presentation about a month ago to the Beverly Rotary Club. Yep. And you got a good response from the Rotarians yes. at our club. And yes. we've signed on. Yep. So we, we still haven't gotten all of the, the, the details and nuts and bolts of, of how we're going to do it. But we've signed on to the project. Yep. and uh, We know and, we've, we've got your support, which is yeah. the support of of the Beverly Rotary Club and hopefully the people in, Rot in, in Beverly behind them as well. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. So let, let's, talk about, um, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the future now. What, what right. do you see as the future of well boring? Are, 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 is Kenya your only area of focus or what's going to happen? Or tell us a little bit about that, Rick. I think, I think um, well boring is, is going to do a lot more work in Kenya. Um, you know, we know, the, um, we know the environment in Kenya. Um, and there is certainly a lot more work we can do just in the Kasumu area, let alone the rest of Kenya. Um, but they're also looking at undertaking other projects in the East African area, which would, which would include Tanzania um, and Uganda, certainly. 
Um, and then beyond that, again, it depends on how much funding there is. We operate with a very um, low um, percentage of admin costs. Yeah. Most of the people um, volunteer their time for nothing. Um, so we have the advantage over some other charities where most of the money, the vast, the vast majority of the money, goes directly to, to, the, to the projects in right. Kenya. Um, if, if you expand too quickly or if you go to too many countries, your admin costs are going to start to increase. Yeah. So I think we want to get it right in Kenya. And then um, beyond that, if, if the charity grows, then um, other countries as well. Yeah. But one step at a time, I think. Yeah. Now, Rick, you have a website, and we'll, we'll show that website here yeah. for, to our viewers. So if people want to uh, get a little bit more information yeah. about Wellboring, so uh, that's at www.wellboring.org. Yeah. What can they see on that website, Rick? They can see the whole story of Wellboring. Um, they can read. A lot. There's lots of information on there um, with regards to specific projects in specific schools and how... You know, each school is different, each community is different, um, but we can bring this common well. But then what they do with the water, how they use that water, I was saying, I, I, some of it goes to agriculture in some of the schools. Some of the schools, they grow their own vegetables, which they then use for, um, for cooking in the schools, for the school meals. Um, so there's lots of store, actual stories there. There's a, there's a live blog as well, which people um, are sending back. Mm -hmm. They can see the organisation of Wellboying, the people on the ground in Kenya, as well as the, the people we've talked about involved in, in the UK. Um, and there's some, some interesting videos. Mm -hmm. And the videos are really good because they, they have the headmasters of the schools. And also, um, we didn't really mention that the, once the well is, is drilled, the well is then managed by the, the school board. Um, and obviously the headmaster is part of that school board. So the ongoing management and sustainability is guaranteed by the, um, by the school board taking a, a, a direct interest in that. So you see some of the videos which have got um, interviews with the school board yeah. and lots of smiling children. Well, I, I, I would imagine, you know, they're, they're not sick, they're in school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, the, the, uh, the, the, the water gatherers now don't have to waste a major part of their day just getting exactly. water. And in a lot of times, <clears throat> that's not even clean water. That's... Uh... Well, yeah, <clears throat> that's the water that's got a lot of disease in it. Um, and it's water which is taken literally from, uh, from, the, from, from the open jungle. And, um, you know, that is not going to be clean, that is for sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and that, that's what gives the, the really nasty diseases which these kids suffer from. Yeah. So it well, can make a huge difference. Yeah, and, and, and uh, as we said before, who, who would have thought that something that we take so for granted here in, in, in our, you know, the well-developed uh, countries... Yeah the advanced countries of the world and when you talk about these uh, these nations in Africa just uh, how, how just having clean water on a daily basis uh, uh, can change their lives in, in, yeah. in such uh, in such terrific ways I don't think we can envisage how, how it is to live um, without clean water quite honestly I, I'm not sure how we would survive yeah. in Beverly or in Chippenham without clean water yeah absolutely well Rick Thank you very much for uh, Thank you. being my guest. A pleasure. Uh, and Thank um, you. Uh, the um, can I just say one thing? Sure, absolutely. Which I forgot to say when we mentioned the um, the website. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a donate button on the website, and okay. so and um, credit cards are accepted from the UK and also the states. So yeah. um, from anywhere. So. Yeah. Please donate if, if you want to support Wellboring. Yeah, and I think our, I think our audience certainly can see the benefit here uh, in, in supporting a, a cause such as this. Thank you. Well, Rick, thank you. And uh, I'd like to remind uh, my audience that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.